You ready? All right. All right, I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Guys, welcome. I'm really, really excited about being able to do this with you today, Janet. So um, I know that I've been, you know, just saying that I was going to get on here one day and everybody has been asking, when are you going to talk? When are you going to get on here and uh, and share something? And um, I've never really wanted to get on here, you know? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of David's thing to do this. And what, what possessed you? What was in your heart that made you want to step out and do this now? Um, I think it's more or less that I feel like I have more in me. There's always mm-hmm. been more in me that I've just always wanted to share. And um, I think it was just God's timing. Be able to share and love on people, huh? Yeah, it's just God's timing. You know, I think um, there's always God's timing. You always have to wait on the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I love doing the devotionals with, with you know, with David. I love um, being able to do everything that I do. But I just, I just feel like, okay, Lord, sometimes I feel that. Here's the thing. I think a lot of the times that we constantly say, Lord, I want to grow more. I want to do more. Um, you know, teach me more. Give me give me more. And a lot of the times, the moment we begin to see growing pains or we begin to feel um, things start happening and everything, we give the enemy credit yeah. because we start thinking, oh my God, I'm going through something, you know, and, and you know, the enemy's attacking me and everything. But a lot of the times, have you stopped to think that maybe they're growing pains, they're, that the mm-hmm. Lord is stretching you to go on to the next level? You know, you can't, you can't ask God to take you to the next level, but the moment that you start grow, going through the fire or you start going through something, you're going to cry about it. Yeah, the Lord showed me that this time, because I am going through the fiery trials, he showed me that you're in labor, you're yeah. birthing. But guess what I'm going to birth? Pains. He says, he says you're going to birth a miracle. Yeah. That's what we're birthing. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and we got to, we got to go through the pains. We really do. And and we're going to be stretched. We're going to be, you know, going through some endurance. Yeah. You know, it's the same way when you go to the gym. You know, the guys right now <laughs> in the mornings, you know, I go take J- David at the to the gym, you know, in the mornings. Um, and Tomas is there. And, you know, um, I think Tomas is there. And I think they meet Brother Anthony there. And I think... Uh, uh, Brother Julio goes too. So all four of them are meeting at the gym and everything. And he's like, you want to go? I'm like, no, you you guys go, you know, I'll, I'll go to the church and I'll make the yeah. coffee for you guys. For right now, I'll let you guys go. I'll let it be a brother thing because they're growing a bond together. And once you guys do that, then I'll start going with you guys, you know. But it's not that I don't want to go and and do the exercise right now. Because right now, I... I need more spiritual exercise because I think that the time that they're over there, it's going to give me a time for me to come over here and be by myself. And that secret place with the Lord, that intimacy. Because a lot of the times I don't get a lot of time by myself. And, you know, today it felt really, really good for me to just come in here and I was listening to my Audible and I was in, in that place where I just felt like, You know, even this morning on the drive here, I was, you know, I turned on the worship music in the car and, you know, with Lily in there and everything, I just, you know, I just had the worship music going and I was already positioning my heart. And a lot of the times as a mother, as a wife and everything, we, we got to find, we got to find those, those moments. We got to find any moment that we can find to just spend any time that we can yeah we're called to chase god because he wants us to chase him it says it's the glory of god to conceal a matter but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter right and we are the kings and queens of the earth yeah and so much that god has for us 
in yeah. those times. And and we have to we have to seek. We have to seek because it's like he's already there. Seek and you will find, right? Yes. And 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 I and I think, you know, it's like the thing is is that we have we have to make that choice. And a lot of the times, and and it's like people are always saying, "Well, where is he?" But the thing is, is he's already there. Yeah, you know, he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's like you know, and and I don't, I don't want to. I want to seize every moment. I don't want to waste any time. I want to seize every moment that I can to be able to to be able to seek him right now and i was like okay you guys can go exercise i'm going to come here and i'm going to take that moment to do this so that i can be able to to just go in a little bit deeper and i think that's why you know i was like you know what i'm going to take this moment so that i can um just be able to to sit down meditate a little bit because i know that i want to sit down with you today um And just be able to share, you know, because I feel that we have, we have so much to, to give to the women out there. We all as women have, you know, a lot to give to each other. Yeah, we do. How much do we really share and how much are we willing to be transparent with one another? Yeah. We're we're not strong and we all go through these trials. Yeah. Some people don't want you to know what they went through. They just want you to think that they arrived. Yeah. But no we haven't (laughs) yeah exactly i think we grow every day and i think a lot of the times we we kind of get a little embarrassed or we try to shy away from the true realities of what happens out there um and we just we kind of step away from from what life really really is you know so i'm gonna what I would like to do is I would like to just share with them and let them know, like, listen, um, today I just want to introduce ourselves. Okay. Um, I would like to kind of let them know a little bit about who we are, where mm-hmm. we come from, um, and what we're, what they have to look forward to. So let's do that. Well, as you guys know, I'm, my name's Sharon, uh, Rocha and, um, I was actually born in the San Fernando Valley. I was actually born out of Pacoima. Um, it's funny because the Tomas and all the guys here, David and everybody, they're all like, yeah, you're from, you know, you're from the Valley. You're from, you know, Southern California. And I'm like, yes, I'm from Pacoima. I was born in Pacoima. And it's so ironic because the Lord brought somebody from northern california southern california together you know and it's 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 pretty awesome because um you know i i never grew up in gangs i didn't know any of that northerner and southerner that type of stuff i didn't know any of that um i did grow up in in southern california and pacoima is a very southern california is um it's uh it's different than over here over here it's a lot of farm style very it's different country over there it's a little different than over here i'm a real city a city city yeah yeah it's very city um and i will say that uh, over there i remember that i would never go anywhere outside of the san fernando valley I would always stay within the San Fernando Valley. I would never go to LA. I would never go to any other cities. So I only knew my little area. And, um, you know, I, I, I kind of grew up being the type of young girl who um, kind of, you know, stuck to a little city, stuck to the same people and, um, I was a mom at a very, very young age um, and uh, lived a very fast life. And I know we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, I got saved at a very, very young age at a Victory Outreach at the age of 16 years old. Um, Walked into a Victory Outreach at 16 and, um, and served there for almost 22 years. 
in uh, the San Fernando Valley off of Osborne Street and um, was there for a long long time and um, then I found myself here in uh, in Northern California in 2015 April of 2015 I have four children uh, my oldest is 32 my daughter is 30 and then I have a son who's 25 and then my youngest is 20 20 gonna be 21 now and um, yeah and then I'm married to David and um, you know I'm a pastor's wife now and um, you know that's where I'm at right now but um so that's where I'm at <laughs> that's where you're at yes <laughs> well, so where did you grow up I don't even know where you grew up well first of all my name is Janet Janet Madrid um I grew up in a in a in a little uh town called Dominguez it's a it's a, on the outskirt of a, a Compton it's right on the borderline of Compton Compton then Dominguez I lived there till I was about 10 or 11 years old and then we moved to LA, LA, downtown LA, actually uh, South Central LA, um, when I was about 11 years old. And so from 11, I grew up and lived in South Central LA. And um, so that's mainly where I, I, I stayed with my life and uh, until I got out of prison um, in 2016, I moved to Orange County which is way different it's like yeah. the suburbs like yeah. surfer dude and I was just yeah. like, like I was like uptown you know and so I moved there and then um, last year the Lord called me up here up north to ministry uh, I got saved uh, two weeks before I paroled I didn't find God in prison I found heroin but two weeks before I paroled God saved my life and um, so I built my life in Orange County for the last couple of years and last year I moved up here up north and here I am in Modesto wow so what was it like for you when you got saved as far as like what do you mean what was it like like when you first got saved um well i had met the lord i didn't know i didn't know god i knew that at all at all at all, at all. so you I, had I, I never, never been the, i never heard the name of jesus i never nothing all i knew was the virgin mary and um catholic church and stuff um did you grow up in a whole Catholic family? Did you mom, were they my, really involved or my mom went to church and and that's all I know. And um my mom went to church. I, I didn't I went to church once in a while with my mom, but just so she wouldn't go alone, so I go with her. Um I remember looking up at, at, at they had Jesus on the cross and I and I looked up, I must have been about fifteen years old, and I looked up and I and I was looking at the cross and I go, Who is that? And she said, It's the Son of God. And I said, what is he doing up there? And she says, well, they killed him because they didn't like him. And I was like, okay. And I felt bad for him because he looked all sad, all hanging from the cross, you know, <laughs> the way they, they portrayed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was never told that, that that's Jesus, that's the Son of God, and he's up there because he died for your sins. His blood it was was spilt for you. I was never told that, never told that. My whole yeah, because I would think the same thing because I grew up going to Catholic church all the time too. And my mom would always take us to catechism, yeah. when we were young um we got baptized in the catholic church uh we grew up in catechism uh and she would always take us to these walks and we would always have those little pigtails those little fake fake pigtails yeah 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 and she would always you know put them in with our hair and everything and we would always be wearing the big old you know um big old skirts and everything and we'd be walking with the Virgin Mary and everything. And I'd be like, you know, I was young, you know, so we'd be in these parades and everything. And I remember those things. And I remember seeing pictures. But my mom was not, she wasn't so involved in. Like involved in church. church no, like that. but then she would get us involved in these events and everything. And I'm like, so that was when we were really, really little, though. And then growing up, um coming into maybe your young young teens she would never really go to church but you know she would turn on some candles sometimes you know the candles. yeah she would turn on the candles but I never really understood what they meant or anything 
But I do remember one thing. I don't know when it happened. And I didn't start thinking about this until, I'm going to say maybe a few years ago. I remember my grandma, my little grandma. She's 92 years old now. And it made me think about it right now because you showed me a picture of your grandma. Mm -hmm. You made me think about my grandma. My grandma one time took me into a little church. And it was a lot of happy people singing to some really super fast Spanish music. They were dancing. Celebrating. Yeah, it was like they were dancing to some really super fast music. And I'm like, these people are dancing so fast, it was making me dizzy. And I'm like, they're singing too fast for me. But I was young and I was having so much fun though. So to me, it was like, these are happy people, you know, so uh, dancing so happily. But it was, I liked it because I had fun because I was having fun with the kids there. And I remember I went a few times with my grandma and my grandma would take me. And another thing that I remembered that we would go visit people. So I think this was called evangelizing because I realize now what evangelizing is that my grandma would go visit people's houses. What I hated about it though, was that every time they would, they would give us water that their cups would smell like egg. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think that's why I hated when people would give us glass that cups. Dirty sponge. Or yes, something. it was gross. But it was funny because that's the only thing that I would remember from visiting people. So it was weird. But I would love being with my grandma because I saw that my grandma would go and they'd be praying for people. But I never understood what it all meant. Mm-hmm. But I will say one thing that when I went through the abuse and when I went through the hard stuff that I went through with the molestation and the abuse and everything that I went through with my father, um, I remember that I cried out to a God, even though I didn't know of him. I just knew that I was crying out to something. And because I, I guess because I had seen my grandma take me and it had nothing to do with what my mom had taken me to church or the images or anything that I had seen through what my mom had showed me at the Catholic churches, but it was because of my grandma, I had seen people crying at the altar I guess and because of that it gave me hope Mm -hmm. I guess that I felt like if those people can cry out to something to take pain away because I remember seeing them crying out to something to take pain away to take something away then surely whoever they're crying out to Maybe he can take my pain away. And I was so little. Yeah. I was maybe nine, ten years old. And then you get saved at around 16. Yeah. So for all those years, you're crying out. Between the ages of nine to 12, I was being abused for all those years. You know? And, And I remember that I'd cry, and I'd cry, and I'd cry. And just hoping to be saved I guess you know you know and 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 just wanting to be saved and and you you asked me um what was it like when I got saved and I never got to answer you yeah but I want to bring it since you're you're talking about it I want to bring it back to you so from you being abused from those those years and you're crying out for all those years from 9 to 16 um, when you finally got saved, what was it like for you? What, what, what happened? What was that moment when, when you knew that there was a God? Or how was it introduced and then what happened? Um, I, I think because I became a mom at such a young age. At what age? At 14 years old. Okay. I, I pretty much ended up moving out at the age of 15. I had my first apartment. I was paying $384 for my first apartment. I was living on my own. And um, and then by the time I had two kids, by the time I was 16 years old, 
So I was, you know, um, I had already became sick. I had not been diagnosed yet, but I was diagnosed with lupus. And um, I did not yet know that I was sick, but I was so sick to the point where I couldn't even feed my, my, my little ones. And I was crawling, like literally crawling to try to get to my fridge. I was burning up with a fever. Um, I could not walk. And there was a woman that literally, there was this big old window in the front of my living room. And there was a woman that would constantly, this is the first time I ever heard worship, by the way. There was a woman that lived right on the side of me, but you had to cross my window, my front door and my window to get to her apartment. And I would always hear her sing these beautiful songs. She had a beautiful voice. And I didn't know that that was worship. I didn't know that was called worship, but she was singing all the time. And I'm like, oh my God, her voice is so beautiful. Oh my God, her voice, because I could hear her all the time. But this one specific time that I was trying to crawl to get to my fridge, she saw me from my window and she stopped and she knocked on my window and she says, like, can I open the door? And I literally froze and I said, yes. She opened up my door. She comes in, she picks me up, puts me back on my couch. She goes, gets, helps me feed my kids. She comes back, she goes, let me help you. And she goes, I need you to watch something. So she turns TBN on for me. TBN. Yeah, TBN. She turns TBN on for me, and Victory Outreach had a paid sponsored thing on there. And there were they had some some um, some T-shirts that had been uh, those uh, what are they called when they're uh, the airbrushed? Airbrushed, airbrushed. I remember there were white T-shirts that had airbrushed on there. I remember them clearly. They were blue airbrushed t-shirts, okay? And they were doing uh, some break dancing type thing. This was back in 90, oh my gosh, 92, 93, mm-hmm. 93, somewhere around there. Um, and they're break dancing and they're doing some type of dance or something to some rap or I don't know what it was. And she's all, this is where you need to go. I'm going to take you here. And she has this little accent. Her name's Marsha. And she's all, I'm going to take you here. This is where you belong. And I'm like, just looking at this woman, like, what? You know? And she's all, I'm going to take you here when you get all better, okay? She's all, I'm going to bring you some food. I'm going to do you this. And then she took care of me the rest of that day. The following day, I was feeling better. She prayed for me feeling better got up she puts me in her car she takes me on over to victory outreach that was the day so you get there and then what 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 happens like because i'm I'm remembering my first encounter i didn't even know there was a god like what what happened i happened she walks me up to the altar and i go up and they do the salvation call and i felt just fuzzy all over do you remember what was said that called you to the altar because like when i hear things i like to see I want pastor to be there. david martinez did the altar call and it was it was a specific song it was the i love you lord and i lift my voice okay and i love that song and i remember when i go up and they just started praying. They did the salvation call. And they gave me an envelope. And I, when we did the prayer call, I said the salvation. And I didn't quite understand it yet, though. I didn't know what I had did. Did you encounter the Holy Spirit that day? No. No, not that day? No, I didn't. I just didn't know what I had did, but I know that I didn't feel the same. Okay. I just didn't feel the same. But did I understand it? No, but I'll tell you one thing that I did. I felt safe. I never left that place ever again. 
do you know that within months I moved across the street? They couldn't get rid of me. Because <laughs> you wanted to be close to <laughs> something, something you needed. That was it. They they were stuck with me for 20-something years. Wow. I It was my place of refuge. It was my safe place. It was my safe haven. It was everything. And even though my walk wasn't, you know, my walk wasn't all the way 100%, like, you know, because it took me a while to get it right. Yeah. But I will tell you one thing, that that was like my family. That was like home for me for so long. So that's that's when... What was the question you asked me? What was it like when, when yeah, you got saved? Yeah, so, so, so that's that's what it was like for you, like in like in the beginning. Um, I just want to share a little bit because I know through these uh, podcasts we're going to be sharing the, the you know our our experience and our testimonies and stuff, you know. Yeah. So I'm just going to give like a, a, a quick because, man, if I go into it, I'm going to go into it. You know what I mean? But but really quick, um, I didn't know the Lord like I was saying. I just that's all I knew of God, and and I never heard the name Jesus. Um, I was really bad drug addicted on the streets and um, just trafficking drugs across the border. And the, my girlfriend that I, I also came out of homosexual lifestyle. The girl, the girl that I was with, she ends up getting busted, and so I felt like my whole life was gone. And, and I just went deeper into drugs, and I ended up staying at my mom's house. <coughs> and my mom's like, Janet, I can't have you here um, because I have kids here. And, and look at you, you know, you got to get yourself right. So she calls my cousin. And my cousin's the only other one I know that is saved in my family. I didn't know that. And he's just like, I'm going to take you to a woman's home. And I'm like, what a woman's home? I get to turn out all these women and I get to get clean. All right, let's go. That's going to be this big old party, you know? And But I encountered the Holy Spirit that night. I encountered the Holy Spirit that night. Um, I smoked my last cigarette. I walk in the home and they're like, don't, they got done with Bible study. I never know what a Bible study was. But I seen them with their Bibles, and I was like, oh, that's the white people stuff. I just thought it was weird, you know? <laughs> and then they're like, um, does anybody need prayer? But at that time, I was broken. I was broken, broken, broken. And um, so I was also a, a quiet type, but something compelled me to raise my hand because I was desperate. So I raised my hand, and um, the chaplain comes, and, and uh, he puts his hand on my head. And the only thing I remember was, like, I associated prayer with God. And I remember when I was little, my mom used to be like, you better behave because Papacito sees everything you're doing. So so she's always threatening me like, God knows and God sees and, and this and that. And I was a bad kid. And of course I was a bad adult. So I had a lot of guilt and shame, you know, knowing that these things were before God that I didn't even know. But I knew that there was a God and he was going to punish me and everything. So I associated prayer with God and I said, pray for me. And he puts his hands on my head and... So I supposed to pray with God, and the only thing that was going through my mind and my heart was, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for everything I did. Just help me, change me. I hate who I am. Help me, God. Mm. And so that was my cry as he's praying for me. You know, I'm standing inside my heart, and I just feel this hot oil cover me from the top of my head all the way down. And I felt the love of God. I felt the power of God, and I felt the forgiveness of God and the embrace of God. And I literally felt God himself. And I was like, whoa. And I thought it was this guy. I was like, man, he's holy like the Pope. And it wasn't wow. that, but it was just the Holy Spirit. I didn't even yeah. know that all that stuff existed. You know, I was like, who is this guy, you know? And um, so the next day I woke up and, and um, I got to learn about Jesus. And I got to learn about what happened to me that day, that, that it was um, the forgiveness of God. And it was uh, the Holy Spirit that touched me. Yeah. And from that point on, like, um, God started transforming my life. I'm not going to go too much in my testimony, but I just want to tell you this part. God started transforming my life, and I was in, in the home for about eight months. I mean, fast transforming my life, and I just had this relationship with God. And um, I got tested. I got into it with this girl, and she's been causing a lot of stuff in the house and, and everything. And what do we do when we get mad? We run. Yeah. And so I got I got tested and I was like I didn't want to do anything bad there. My flesh, I wanted to beat the girl up and I wanted to do all these things, you know, wreck the place, but I couldn't because I knew who God was. Yeah. So I close the door and I leave and I run and I go get high. And the Bible says there's seven more deadly come than the ones that left. Seven more into and enter. And it's like a dog returning to his vomit and yeah. I return to my vomit and so I, I got filled with demons that, that day. It took a week, and I started feeling things crawl on me. I started hearing voices, and from that point on, I lost my mind for 14 years on the streets, in and out of prison, um, drug addicted, and um, 
that person you see on the side of the road screaming and all that stuff, you know? And, um, so how I came back to God real quick. I'm trying to keep this all short because I want to save it for when we talk about our testimony. Mm -hmm. But I just want to touch to the point where I come back to God. Um, so I'm lost. And then, um, I did three years in prison. I was out three months, went back in with seven more years. And this time, by that time, um, I'm in and out of jail. I had two strikes and... I got beat up really bad, and all I see myself was going back out there and, and getting beat up again in those streets, you know? Yeah. And so I cried out to God once, one more time because I'd been crying out to God. It was like he was deaf. He didn't hear me. And um, that day, this time I opened up the word, and I said, God's not speaking to me. And God spoke to me through his word, and I felt the presence of God. Once you know the Holy Spirit, you'll always know, and you know that that's God. And the next day I woke up, and I was just, um, I was free. Oh, I didn't. I didn't have no want, no crave, no need for drugs because I was addicted to heroin then, and 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 I wasn't even dope sick. And so, what is it like to be saved? How did it feel? If I felt free, yeah, I felt free. But it's still a walk. Okay, now we come to the cross, and God frees us from that. Here He says, "Here I am." Yeah. But yet, we now we, we have to empty ourselves. And so, for this last, um, I think it's almost going to be seven years now. I've been trying to empty myself. I said, Lord, I not get rid of all of me, God. And so when they see me, let them see you. And so God just radically transformed my life through his word. And the trials and tribulations that come that I pray as we, we talk on this channel that we can share the growth. Yeah. That, that how God grew you, how God grew me, all our struggles, all our things, because we're women and we can help other women because women process things different than men yeah we do not in every sense yeah. but there's just something that there's a connection unto women you know yeah, there is so go ahead i'm sorry i get excited no I just love no the there talk. is so go, go no ahead. no no yeah i'm agreeing with you girl keep yeah, talking <laughs> keep talking yeah because i know today's only an introduction but but i get excited because man just I praise God. He's so good. You know, his ways are higher than, than, than the heavens, further than we can see. And, and you know, that, that song, I was blind, but now I see. Mm -hmm. So I get excited because I, I didn't know all the things that were wrong with me. Yeah. You know, I thought that was normal. And the Lord told me this. He says, the truth will set you free. But he says, you know, in the streets, you'd be like, come on, man, tell the truth. You know, you feel better. And the Lord said, Janet, it's not the lie you told, it's the lie you're living. Yeah. And so he began to expose these lies in my life. You know, all the lust of, of, of for women, all, all the, the the lust for, for power and money and position and all these things, you know. So he said this, I'm going to take you back to the garden where I created you to be before life happened before all these things that your family put on you, everything that the streets put on you, all these things, I'm taking you back to the to the woman, the woman of God who I created you to be. Yeah. And I seen this innocence. And so the Lord brought back my innocence. He He's healed my heart, my hurt, my pain. And am I fully healed? No, because he's always exposing something because he says to take you from glory to glory, transforming you into the image of God. And we are made in his image. So even when we think we got there, we think whatever, as long as we pray for it, we have to give him our will. God, show me more, God. Give me more, God. You know? And then, but be careful what you ask for. Yeah. You know? Because then the trials and those things come. Yeah. You know? But there's a God. And go ahead. But you know what? what's beautiful? I just want to really say is that I love what you just said because a lot of women don't believe that there's a capability of them being able to go back to become transformed to that image. They feel that they can't ever be that. And the thing is, is that God can take them back and can transform them. And, and they don't believe in that, and, you know? And, and that's why we want to be able to show them that yes, they can, you know? Yes, they can. It's like a lot of them, you know they live in so much shame and condemnation and they continuously they they feel that they have to live 
in condemnation. They feel that they have to stay in the rut that they're in, you know? And it's like they feel like God will never change me. God can't change me. And so that they don't even, they, they believe that there is no redemption. They feel that they're, that God will never see them ever again. But the thing is, is that, yes, there is. You can go back. I'm, I'm wanting to just like scream and like interrupt yes. you. Why? Because I was that woman. Yes. Because I grew up. So I love what you just said. I love that because... Because yes, you're you're right. You know, and I thought that was the card that I was dealt. You know exactly. what I mean? Because the first memory I ever had was liking little girls instead of little boys. Since I was five years old, so I thought that I was created that, and it's also a generational curse. I have I have a, my mother was like that. I have uncles that live with men and all those things. So I thought that it's just uh, something I inherited, and that's the way God made me. And there is no nothing that can change me, and I still believe that until I started walking with God and He started peeling away these things. And before I knew it, I was like, "Wait a minute, I don't even like girls no more. What's happening to me?" You know. But I don't like men either. But I didn't like nothing like all the lusts of the flesh and all these things. Yeah, you know, they're gone. But anyways, I, I I didn't know. And so I seen somebody else that posted. It was actually Eli. I seen his post and it says that, that the Lord delivered him from homosexuality. I go, you too? The Lord does those things? Yeah. You know? And also, um, just the, the just things that are inside of us that we yeah. feel that cannot be changed. Yeah. So, so we have to get our minds off of our image of how we think that our life should look like and just say, okay, Lord, here I am and be Empty naked. Empty ourselves. Yes, yeah, here I am, be naked, be God. Naked. Because he says that he clothes us in righteousness. Yeah. Okay, we're striving for this other righteousness or these other things. We have to allow the Lord to clothe us. Yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> And you say, go ahead. You're funny, girl. Because I got to shut myself up. Because no, that's okay, on and on girl. And on, I'm you know? good with that. Um, you know, you want to know one of the one of the reasons why I was able to fall in love with David? You, you want to know one of the... It's, oh, I'm it's, waiting. It's, it's, it's beautiful because when you say the word naked, it's it's crazy. Because when he... When I, I met him, um, I remember he's, he said, I have nothing to offer you. Um, I don't, he goes, I don't have anything. I've lost everything. I don't have anything. He goes, I live over here in a little RV in my parents' ranch. Um, and I remember that the Lord, that the Lord had already given me a dream even before even meeting him. The Lord had already showed me in a dream. And I remember the Lord had told me, I've given you him completely naked with nothing. And it was perfect for me because because of that, I was able to see his heart and only his heart. Yeah. And that's all I wanted because everything else will be added unto him. I, you and know what I see right now when you're explaining that is that's beautiful because in the, in, in the midst of that, God is teaching you who he is. Yeah. Because he gave you him naked with nothing with nothing. and then here you come with nothing with nothing and, and the lord just built you both together, together. and, and yeah. supplied everything supplied every need yeah. and put and, you in yeah you know yeah beautiful. and and i and i and it, and it was beautiful because when we did you know come together i remember his dad um at the foot of a uh, of the u-haul and you you know his dad the way his dad yeah. talks and I remember his dad was just sitting there with his little hat you know with his little cowboy boots you know at the end of the U-Haul and his dad's like oh, I don't know he goes two broken people let's just see what God's gonna do with you guys <laughs> but you know what um, but look at what the Lord has done you yeah. know and I'm excited because um, this is something that I've I've been really, really wanting to do, and I'm I'm just really glad that I'm going to be able to do it with you. Amen. Thank I'm, you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you for, for even thinking about me, like, enough to, because things like this I take as an, as an, as an honor. It's a privilege I'm, to, to I'm, have an opportunity to, to speak too, the sis. things of God. And, and I just, I, I can't wait because it's like, praising god amen it's just like praising well every god. every time every every time we get an opportunity to share the gospel every time that we have an opportunity to lift his name up on high 
man, you know, it, it's it's a form and a way of of just honoring his name and just doing something that's just going to build the kingdom, glorify you God. know, and it's going to glorify him, build the kingdom. And it's, man, can you imagine for every single time that there is one salvation, all of heaven rejoices Amen. and man, you know, and this is, this is what we're doing. We're building the kingdom because there's so many people out there. There's so many women. There's so many men. There's so many people out there that just need to be reached. And you know, you know, one thing that God was showing me that his church, his church is hurting. He's, he was showing me, you know, not just all, all the, the brokenhearted that don't know Christ, but we come to God and some of us are lost in direction. Yeah. Some of us are, are lost in, in, in the ways of God or whatever. And that's what discipleship is. And not that this is a discipleship, but his church himself yeah. is hurting. And, and all we can do is, is share and sharpen each other. Like, yeah. wait, let me give you the answer. Let me give you the hope. This is what God told me. This is what the word says. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, I'm going to be completely transparent, sis. You know, I think a lot of nowadays people are tired of um, people are tired of no transparency. Um, I think it's it's just time when the way that we're, people are going to reach people are just by being transparent, being real and just loving people and meeting people at where they're at. And it's so important that um, just being honest, just being real. I think it's so important just not being nothing other than what we are. You yeah, know? or think that we have arrived, and like I said, like yeah, like because you're you're a pastor's wife, don't think nothing. In, and if I could just read that the I'm, scripture that I'm above, fast, that I'm above anything. That you're that above I, anything. Yeah, yeah that, that's what that's what yeah. that, that part gonna go I, with the yeah, scripture right here. Perfect. Can oh, I read it? Yes, share it. I know you were sharing with it earlier. Share, please. Yeah, do. it's in, it's in First Peter four twelve, and it says, "Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is try to try you." as though something strange thing is happening to you but rejoice to the extent that the and partake of Christ's suffering that when his glory is revealed you may also be glad with exceeding joy and that's what we're supposed to do also is in a lot of times in a lot of times in the bible it says to, to the sufferings of Christ to suffer with him yeah. and what is love love suffers long yeah. because we're supposed to love God but see we're also supposed to reflect our lives on the lives of Jesus. Yeah, exemplify so, who yeah, he is. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we look in the Gospels and how he was tempted, yeah. how he was rejected, yeah. all these things that happened to us. So, beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which tries you. Yeah. And he doesn't say um, pastors' wives are exempt. He doesn't say um, evangelists are exempt. Yeah. All these Nobody's people. Nobody's exempt. Nobody's exempt. That's right. Nobody's exempt. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No. <laughs> don't call me a goat head, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> David always says, don't call me a goat head. I'm, I'm not a goat head. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And I think that's I think that's what's so important that we just always be transparent, always just keep it real and keep it organic because I, you know, people just want to hear, you know, the truth, you know, the truth of the truth of what's in here, the truth of what's in here. Um, and you know, and just don't be something other than what we are. What, what is um, the, what is the, you said, you said be organic. What's the meaning of or organic? Organic is just being yourself. No, be, no, no, but, but the true, you know, of organic food, what is it? It's like, no, nothing added. No, no preservatives, no, no preservatives, nothing added. Nothing added. Just, just grown pure. Just, Puro. Yeah. Puro. Something que es orgánico. Yes, let's just keep it organic, you know? Nothing added, no preservatives, no... Natural. Natural. Just something natural. And let's just keep it natural, guys, you know, because when we try to be something that we're not, you know, then, then you know, what's the purpose, you know? Yeah. You know, there's there's no purpose to it, you know? Um, it makes no sense. It really doesn't make any sense. And you know what? And even though I know this was our first time doing this and everything, um, 
you know, we'll we'll get better at it as time this goes. Is, this is just a lot of uh, just sharing, like just this open talk and sharing, like a little bit about ourselves. But bottom line, bottom line, what could you say to them to expect from this channel? What is what is the 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 foundation of it, the the root of it? What what, what do they have to look forward to? Um. I really, really, truly believe that um, as we continue to have our conversations, you know, and everything, um, I think the fact that we've gone through so many things in life, you know, and everything, and as we we hopefully come together, that the Lord will use us to use our life experiences as women. He knows what needs to be shared. Yes, He's listening. as women. Um, to be able to share those life experiences along with scripture um, and just life experiences with the women um, and be able to be open about it because I think that there's not a lot of transparency out there. A lot of women are afraid to speak about subjects and things that um, they, they hold back sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I think that there has to be uh, more women out there that are able to speak more freely about things and are open up more and not be afraid. Um, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not afraid. And I know you're not afraid. I'm, I'm not afraid because I know that I, number one, I, I know that who my maker is. You know who your maker is. We know who our father is. But I also know who my husband is. And my husband knows who his creator is. Yeah. And because I know that, um, we know our identity very well in Christ. And because of that, we are, we don't need to hide who we were, who we are. Um, and because of that, we can speak freely, you know, of where we've been. Um, and I and I think that that gives us the opportunity to be able to be open. I, I keep on smiling and I want to laugh because I keep on hearing like in the in like see, imagining in the background like remember like Sally Jesse Raphael and Phil Donahue and yeah. Doctor Phil yes, and all that stuff. Yes. And so what it is is should I wear, you have red glasses? Yeah. <laughs> Sally, you know, so, so so in in the midst of this, this is gonna be like like a like a worldly show. Oh, we have these people with these problems, da, 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 da. but but this is gonna be uh, in Christ. This is gonna be look at these people suffer. See, but on those shows, there was never hope. It's just like so and so went through this. You know, and they're still trying and they're struggling, no. but they're making no, it. No, guys, life. we're bringing you Jesus. No. Yeah, so 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 we're gonna bring you the suffering, but we're gonna bring you the answer, the hope, and, and share maybe, um, kind of like how the Lord awoke in us. Maybe because what what works for me or what word was for me may not be for you, but there is a word in the Word of God for you to awaken you. But these are the steps that we took, and, and God will minister to you on your own for the steps that you have to take. But but I pray that some of the things that that we share um, expand your mind, expand uh, your heart, because give you revelation. Uh, because let me tell you something: there is a God, yeah, and He and He is God of freedom, and He broke those chains. Now it's us for us to seek out this freedom and to understand what God has and take hold, take hold of the horn of our altar, of, of His altar, the horn of our salvation, and find refuge in Him. Yep. You know. Amen. And Amen. I mean, Hallelujah. <laughs> anyways. Amen. Well, I guess uh, I guess till next time, and um, I look forward to to just you know the next time. I really, really do. I, th I, I think this was this was actually really but, fun. But let me tell you, so let me tell you what I'm laughing. Tell me, girl. I'm laughing tell right me. Now. I'm laughing right now because the I think we're polar opposite. Like you are so like you know and you're talking and so calm and i'm like you like i'm just like you know what i mean so it's gonna it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun because because, I, the way I like it meshes, it because it's we're gonna so, bring a balance it's gonna bring a balance and, and i think and flow. i think that's important because it's the same thing with like me and david david is so totally opposite for me because i'm you with david yeah like i'm like the real 
bubbly and real social and David's the more serious, more calm and yeah. and you're like the real and I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit I, I'm surprised because I'm a little bit calmer and you're but we're both perfectionists in a sense yeah. you know it's crazy because we're both alike that's why I think I understand you I can be on a phone hours with you but it's it's crazy because we are going to bring each other balance and we're totally opposite worlds and yeah. I and I love that though because but, but, I do but, understand we're you. We're united here. We're united yeah. in him. Same father, same DNA. Same, you know? same, same everything. Yeah, and I, but I, but I love that though because you know, um, I love that we come from different, a lot of the different backgrounds. But you know, we're we're women though, you know, we're women and we understand a lot of the same things. Yeah. You know, in our goal is to to reach these women and to you know help them understand that there is a father who sees the the jewel and the gems that they are you know and to understand that they are a treasure yeah you know and we're going to do that together and I'm really really excited because you know I think I think women I think women underestimate underestimate themselves in um in the kingdom and i sometimes feel like they feel that um that they don't serve a purpose in a sense and i feel that you know i think it's time that they need to start putting on their boots and they better get ready yeah, for war we, too yeah and we got to get to that point where we understand who we are in christ yes because like you said people don't they underestimate who they are as a woman. No, not just as a woman. Us as as a man, woman. We underestimate who we are in Him. Yes. We we don't we don't realize that we think, but we don't see that that how much we are enough in Him. Not to be proud. But no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying to find your your strength. Well, yes, your, your strength, strength in Christ. Him, but you know? but but a lot of the times we don't look. Yes, absolutely. We don't, know. We absolutely. don't understand. We we don't feel worthy. We feel. Yes. Yes, you know, so but I, but I, but I believe I really, really, really want women to to understand that they they too can have a boldness, right? That they too can have a boldness. They too can have an intimacy with Christ. You know that they have to know that. You know, um, I I just really, really want them to understand that that they too can have a place. You and know? whatever that that's causing them to believe that they can never be healed, or that's just how they are. Um, so they can come to that point where they can really say, no, God can change me. Yeah, there yeah. is hope for me. I don't yeah. have to live like this. Yeah, you know, um, I, you know, I've, I've, I've learned to, you know, I know my place. I know my place as a woman of God, being aside my husband, not behind, not you know, nothing. I know my place to be here with my husband, so that we together can go and do what we need to do for the kingdom. I know what we need to do. You know why? Because time is time is near, time is short. There is so much that needs to be done. And if we're not aligned, if we're not aligned, right. if we're not both seeking the same thing, then you know what happens is the woman stays behind. If one is going a little bit further, we need to be here together so that we can be like okay honey you ready let's go because there's souls to be saved there's things that we need yeah. to do for the kingdom let's go let's go together i got your back honey i got you let's do this so this is why we need to make sure that our women know what needs to be done so yeah okay all right that's it let's Go and to another day. Till next time. All right, till next time.